it's a Christmas show. It's basically um, the Marvelous Wonderettes are providing Christmas entertainment for Harper's Hardware Store. Um, so the audience is going to hear a bunch of fun Christmas songs, a bunch that they know, some that they may have never heard of, all in four-part harmony, dancing, singing, fun, quirky characters. It's um, pretty much the perfect Christmas review show to come to see at this time of year. There's a lot of history with this play, and it's, it's kind of fun history. Um, it started life in Milwaukee in a little cabaret when a man named Roger Bean wrote a show called The Marvelous Wonderettes, which had a group of four graduating uh, women from a 1958 high school in Springfield uh, coming on to save the day because the act that was supposed to be there, the, um, the crawling crab cakes, <laughs> didn't make it, so uh, they had to be the subgroup. And it turned out they were a beautiful harmony group. They sang a lot of great 50s numbers, like uh, Doris Day numbers or um, uh, silly numbers like Mr. Lee and numbers that are, had, had a certain amount of innocence. Then in the second act, we see them come back for their 10th reunion in the 1960s, and they're not innocent anymore. They know they're singing like, fierce songs, you don't own me, give me a little respect, kind of thing. So it was such a success, this original show, um, not just when it played here in, uh, well, Gananoque, actually, the Thousand Islands Playhouse, but all over wherever it's played, uh, including off-Broadway, that Roger Bean decided he had to write a second one. <laughs> and he thought it would be useful to do something that's not as often done, girl groups during the Christmas era. Um, I'm playing Betty Jean, and Betty Jean is, it's actually, she works at Harper's Hardware, and so it's her Christmas party. She's very, um, it's usually Missy runs the show, she's one of the other characters in the show. This time Betty Jean is in charge, and she knows exactly how she wants the show to go. She's very exuberant, she's very energetic, She's not very organized, so things do not go exactly as she plans. Um, but she is the kind of, in the original show, she's the class clown of the group. And now she's a C, a, well, not quite CEO, but almost vice president of the company. So this is very important to her. Trees. There are four girls that are archetypal. There's um, the kind of Miss Perfect a character named Missy. There's the uh, blonde, gum-chewing character who is lovable, but not the brightest bulb in the block, um, and that's um, Susie, who you've uh, seen. And then there's Cindy Lou, who's the uh, high school beauty pageant winner, who is uh, with the heart of gold, but at first you don't realize that. And then there's Betty Jean, who is kind of the class clown who needs attention. I'd say like 80% of the show is music, so, so there's like just under 30 songs to learn, I'd say. Um, there's Run Run, Ru Run, Run Rudolph, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, some pretty like um, really tight four-part harmony songs like Snowfall. Um, it's really, it's, there's a lot of high energy fun songs that m make you think of Christmas and you feel all happy and bubbly inside, and, but then the challenge of that is they are such tight harmonies within that, that we have to be accurate. First of all, it's just fun music, and some of it is well known, like, uh, you know, Jingle Bells or Ring Those Christmas Bells or Winter Wonderland, and some of it is great Christmas music that really feels like from another era. There's a, a song called um, I want to see Santa do the mambo, <laughs> which is just, you know, fun. They, they go to sort of Christmas all over the world. So uh, there, there's a Donde Este Santa Claus. <laughs> and, and, um, and there's a song in the first Wonderette show called Mr. Sandman that most people know. And the guy who wrote Mr. Sandman actually decided he'd make more money off it by also writing it as a Christmas song. So he rewrote the lyrics and called it Mr. Santa. <laughs> and that's how we start the show. So, um, I think, have we got one more number to do today? Or you know, there's some shows that you direct and you just, just a struggle. You say, okay, well, I, you know, somebody's got to help Hamlet out here. But with this show, it's fun to come in every day. 
And I have a great team working with me, a great choreographer, and Dana Tikash and uh, Greg Gibson, uh, music director. I've worked with them both before. Um, so we all feel like family. And that, I hope, translates on stage.